Candyland kids. Welcome to Candyland. Today, we're going to share some adventures with all your favorite Candyland friends. Are you ready to play a color game? That means all your cards on the board should have the color side up, like this. In our first story, we'll help Grandma Nut solve a mystery. Be sure to listen for this sound. That means you've just been given a clue, and it's time to remove a card from the board. Are you ready? Let's play our game. Our story is entitled, Who's Been Eating My House? It was a beautiful morning in Candyland. A big yellow sun was in the sky. The Candyland kids went to visit Grandma Nut to help her water her popcorn flowers. Look, Grandma Nut! Someone's taken a bite out of your peanut brittle house. Oh, dear! Look! Whoever nibbled on your house left behind a green gumdrop. But nobody noticed a pair of beady little eyes that peeked up over the red cotton candy hedges. The very next morning, the Candyland kids went to visit Grandma Nut again. Grandma Nut stepped out of her peanut brittle house and looked up to admire the minty blue sky. But when she looked down, she discovered that someone had taken a bite out of her front porch. And there on the ground, she found another clue. Why, look! A purple plum! And then she saw yet another clue. Sticking up out of the ground was a big yellow lollipop. Grandma Nut and the kids decided to ask King Candy for help. Meanwhile, King Candy was outside his royal castle deciding what color his royal painters should paint the walls. Paint my walls orange. No, 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 I've changed my royal mind. Paint my walls blue. Wait a minute, I've changed my royal mind again. You'd better make those walls red. Oh, one more thing, I'd like my royal castle to have Purple stripes as well. Oh, King Candy, someone's been munching on my peanut brittle house, and that someone left behind a gumdrop, a plum, and a lollipop. Well, I know just what to do. Follow me. King Candy marched away with Grandma Nut and the kids as that same pair of beady eyes peeked out from behind the castle wall. They walked all the way to Green Gumdrop Mountains and the cave where Jolly Gumdrop lives. Excuse me, Jolly, are you missing any gumdrops? Let's look. I'm not missing any red gumdrops. All my orange gumdrops are still here. The blue gumdrops are all present and accounted for, you know. <laughs> Uh, the only one I'm missing is the green gumdrop I gave to Plumpy. Aha! A trail of clues leads to Plumpy in the plum tree forest. Aha! But as they all left, that same pair of beady little eyes peeked out from behind a pile of gumdrops. Plumpy? Do you still have the gumdrop that Jolly gave you? Well, no, I gave that gumdrop and one of my very best plums to Princess Lolly of Lollipop Woods. Aha! Another clue! Aha! Follow me to Lollipop Woods! But as everyone marched down the path, no one noticed those same beady little eyes peeking out from behind a purple plum tree. Uh, Princess Lolly, uh, whatever became of the gumdrop Jolly gave you and the plum Plumpy gave you? Why, I gave them to Lord Licorice, along with one of my finest yellow lollipops. Aha! Lord Licorice! Aha! 
But what the king didn't know was that those same two beady little eyes were watching everything from high atop an orange lollipop tree. And those eyes belong to none other than Lord Licorice. <gasps> it's Lord Licorice! He goes, I've been discovered! Did you take a bite out of my peanut brittle house and leave behind a green gumdrop? Did you munch on Grandma Nut's peanut brittle house and leave behind one of my sweetest purple plums? Did you nibble on Grandma Nut's peanut brittle house and leave behind one of my finest yellow lollipops? Yes, but I love the taste of peanut brittle so much. I simply couldn't help myself. I am deeply, deeply sorry, you know. Well, sorry is not enough. As King of Candyland, I hereby find you guilty of illegal munching of property not owned by you. And as punishment, I command you to fix Grandma Nut's house and paint it any color she chooses. And that's exactly what happened. Perhaps you should paint it red. Oh, no, 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 no. I better make it orange. Oh, yes, and there should be blue polka dots. Oh, dear. <laughs> that was fun. It pays to keep an eye on Lord Licorice. That's right. And now it's time to play a picture game. That means all the cards on your board should have the picture side up, like this. Now Grandma Nut will crank her jack-in-the-box and play a little tune while you set up your board. When the clown pops out of the jack-in-the-box, it will be time to play the game. Here we go. castle and he just wasn't happy. I'm just not happy. King Candy looked at his royal calendar. Oh my goodness, my birthday is today. But he had no one to spend his birthday with. This made him even sadder. So King Candy made a decision. Send in the royal messenger. <laughs> yes, sire. King Candy pulled a large feather out of the messenger's cap. He used it to write out a royal decree. Take this royal decree to everyone in Candyland. Tell them I will give a reward to anyone who can cheer me up on my birthday. Uh, yes, sire. The royal messenger quickly left, wearing a pair of roller skates. First, he met Gloppy, who was pulling a load of candy in his wagon. <laughs> Why, I'll think of something to cheer up King Candy. Next, the royal messenger met Jolly. Hmm, I, I wonder what would cheer up King Candy. Maybe he'd like a new hat. Oh, no, 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 no. He always wears the crown. Well, I'll think of something, you know. Meanwhile, back at the castle, King Candy was preparing for his visitors. Hmm, I'd better clean up this castle. King Candy pulled out a big mop. He 
mopped and mopped until he had mopped up the whole castle. Then King Candy looked out the castle window. Oh dear, now I must rake the royal yard. And with that, King Candy pulled out a rake. King Candy raked and raked until he had a huge pile of leaves. Finally, King Candy looked at the moat around the castle. Floating in the water, he saw an old umbrella. Oh my, now I suppose I must clean out the moat. So King Candy got out the royal rowboat. Once in the water, he was joined by a silly duck. Then, finally, the royal messenger returned. Sire, everyone's coming from all over Candyland to try and cheer you up on your birthday. And everyone did come. They all brought presents to cheer up King Candy. Jolly brought a ball. Oh, goody. King Candy threw the ball up and down and bounced it off the royal walls of his castle. But soon, he was tired of playing alone. Mr. Mint brought a bicycle. King Candy hopped right on, and soon he was riding all over the castle. Whee! This is fun! But King Candy soon got tired of riding alone. Then Gloppy gave the king a drum. How wonderful! King Candy beat on his new drum all over the castle halls. He beat on it until his ears hurt. Oh dear, I'm just as lonely as I ever was. Next, Plumpy and Princess Lolly tried to cheer him up. Here's a basket, King Candy. You can put things into it. And here is a beautiful flower. King Candy smelled the flower and then put it in his new basket. But he still looked sad. I'm still sad. Finally, the Candyland kids arrived at the castle. We didn't bring a present, King Candy. We've only brought our friendship. What a great gift. If you will be my friends, then I won't be lonely anymore. King Candy happily pulled out the key to the royal treasure room to give them their reward. We don't want a reward, King Candy. We'd like to celebrate your birthday with a birthday party. And that's just what they all had. On the table sat a big bowl of strawberries. Then Queen Frostine brought in ice cream cones for everyone. Hey, let's make some decorations out of paper. And we can color them with these crayons. Then Jolly surprised everyone by reaching into his pocket and pulling out a horn. <laughs> Let's have some music! <laughs> Mr. Mint spotted an empty bottle on the table. He grabbed it and blew into it. It sounded like a tuba. It was a perfect birthday party. Fun and music and even balloons. Everyone played their favorite games. Princess Lolly especially liked playing on the swings. But one thing was missing. We don't have a cake. Just then, Grandma Nut entered the room with her gift, the biggest birthday cake they'd ever seen. This is the best birthday anybody ever had. Hooray! Gosh, that was a great party. Now King Candy has a birthday party every year. And at the end of the party, he lights a giant Roman candle, like this one. Now Mr. Men is going to light this candle while you set up the game board for the next game. It's a color game, so all the cards should have the color side facing up, like this. When the candle goes off, we'll be ready to begin. Here we go! It's gonna 
to go off soon. I'm going to cover my ears. to begin our next story. This story is entitled, Lord Licorice's Surprise. One day, Lord Licorice gave Plumpy and Jolly a basket filled with red licorice. Deliver this licorice to Queen Frosty, and I will have a wonderful surprise for you when you return. And so Plumpy and Jolly set off to deliver the licorice to Queen Frostine. I'll bet Lord Licorice will surprise us with a tasty treat. Maybe some yellow taffy, you know. Or maybe he'll surprise us with yummy blue gumballs. Before long, Plumpy and Jolly reached the lollipop woods, where they quickly discovered that they were... Lost! I am sure the way out of Lollipop Woods is by following the purple lollipop trees, you know. No, 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 Jolly. The map says to follow the green lollipop trees. Oh! Suddenly, Princess Lolly magically appeared and said, You're both wrong. The way out of Lollipop Woods is by following the orange lollipop trees. Following Princess Lolly's directions, Plumpy and Jolly found their way out of Lollipop Woods, only to get lost again, this time in Molasses Swamp. Gee, this place is a gooey mess. Look at the bright side, Plumpy. At least it's not raining. Oh, no! It is raining, and we're sinking down into this yucky stuff. Oh, cheer up, Plumpy. Rain helps things grow and turn green. But this is terrible. If we're stuck in the muck, how will we deliver the licorice to Queen Frostine? Suddenly, Gloppy popped up from under the swampy goo and said, <laughs> With a little luck, I can get you unstuck from the muck. All I have to do is jump up into the air like this, then fall back down like this. <laughs> Geronimo! And there, beneath the muck, where Plumpy and Jolly were stuck, was an orange road. It worked! <laughs> we're unstuck from the muck! <laughs> But you better hurry before the swamp covers up the road again. Plumpy and Jolly ran as fast as they could and reached the edge of the swamp just before the gooey molasses swamp swallowed up the road. Phew. Well, now that we're out of the swamp, how do we get to Queen Frostine's Ice Cream Island before the bright yellow sun goes down? Just then, Mr. Mint appeared and said, just hop into my red banana split boat, and I'll row you to Ice Cream Island. Jeez, thanks a bunch, Mr. Mint. <laughs> Jolly jumped as far as his little purple legs could take him, and landed kerplunk in the middle of the boat. Then Plumpy jumped as far as his little green legs could take him which was not far enough to kerplunk him into the boat. Instead, Plumpy landed with a big kersploosh right into the orange soda sea. Quick, Plumpy, climb up the candy cane. Plumpy shimmied up the candy cane and scrambled into the banana split boat. Ooh, the ice cream sea is so cold, I'm turning blue. When the banana split boat arrived at Ice Cream Island, Plumpy and Jolly jumped on the shore and handed Queen Frostine the basket filled with red licorice. 
I think Lord Licorice has played a nasty trick on you. I already have plenty of his licorice. Does that mean he's not going to surprise us with some yummy blue gumballs, do you suppose? Or sticky sweet yellow taffy? I seriously doubt it. Then we'd better get back home right away and find out just what Lord Licorice's surprise is. I can help you there. Queen Frostine tapped Plumpy and Jolly with her magic wand, and they disappeared in a puff of twinkling light. And when they reappeared, they found themselves magically transported to Plumpy's Plum Tree Forest, where they saw that almost all the purple plums had been picked from the trees. And when they ran to Jolly's Gumdrop Mountains, they saw that all of his best gumdrops had been taken away. I only have one orange gumdrop left. And I only found one green gumdrop. We'd better get to Lord Licorice's castle and find out what's going on. I've got blue gumdrops in my wagon. And I've got yellow gumdrops in there, too. With so many purple plums, I'm never glum, cause I stole them all. Yes, it's true. And we caught you. So this is your sneaky surprise, Lord Licorice. Well, it didn't work, and now you'll just have to return all the gumdrops to Jolly. And, and all the plums to Plumpy. Egads! I've been caught red and Which, in the end, was also the color of Lord Licorice's face. Lord Licorice learned his lesson. Now it's time for a last game. It's a picture game. This time we'll turn on our special candy clock while you set up the game board. Turn all your cards so the picture side is up, like this. When the candy clock alarm rings, it will be time to play our game. Are you almost ready? The candy clock is about to go off. Our next story is called Don't Say Fluffy Puffer. One fine afternoon, a strange visitor came floating into Candyland, hanging on to a bunch of balloons. Mr. Mint was the first person to see him. Now who could that be? Mr. Mint stopped picking his strawberries. Then he went over to the stranger. Hello, I'm Mr. Mint. Who are you? <laughs> My name is Fluffy Puffer. Fluffy Puffer? As soon as his name was said out loud, the Fluffy Puffer split into two different Fluffy Puffers. Mr. Mint was so startled that he fell back and knocked over his wagon. Wow! My, my, my! I'd better warn the others about this. Across the meadow, King Candy and Queen Frostine were having a picnic. King Candy eagerly opened their food basket. Would you like some juice, Queen Frostine? Yes, thank you. Please hand me the bottle. Oh, look! It's Mr. Mint. Mr. Mint rushed up to them breathlessly on his bicycle. <sighs> There's a strange new creature in Candyland. The two fluffy puffers came up behind Mr. Mint. If you say its name out loud, it turns into more creatures. Just then, Gloppy pulled up to the bank in his rowboat. 
<laughs> well, what is its name? Fluffy Puffer. And sure enough, the Fluffy Puffers behind Mr. Mint turned into a small crowd of Fluffy Puffers. Oh, oh no! no! Oh, no! The Fluffy Puffer saw a funny duck in the river. They all jumped into the water to play with it. But the duck flew away and left behind one little feather. Just then, along came the Candyland kids. The girl had a pretty flower in her hair. Say, who are these folks? <laughs> They're fluffy puffers, but don't. It was too late. The fluffy puffers doubled into quite a large crowd of fluffy puffers. Sorry I asked. Maybe they would like to play with this ball. Then King Candy had an idea. He called for his royal messenger. The royal messenger appeared instantly on his royal roller skates. The king instructed him to tell everyone in Candyland that they are not to say... Not to say what, sire? Not to say Fluffy Puffer. Whoops. <gasps> oh. <gasps> Gloppy was so excited by what was happening that he tripped over a garden rake. Seeing that someone would have to restore order to Candyland, Queen Frostine invited everyone back to her castle. But when they all got there, they saw that the Fluffy Puffers had now gathered in the royal garden at the swings. I have a plan. Queen Frostine whispered her plan to them. Here's a hat, Queen Frostine. And look, here comes Gloppy with an umbrella. I can make a magic spell. All we need is a calendar. King Candy handed her his calendar. Now I need to mark the magic dates for my spell to work. Here, Queen Frostine, use my crayons. The queen marked off the calendar and started chanting a spell while she waved the umbrella over the hat. But then Gloppy caught sight of Jolly coming towards them, carrying a mop. <laughs> hey, Jolly, whatever you do, don't say Fluffy Puffer. Oh, no. In an instant, the entire garden was overflowing with Fluffy Puffers. They were soon playing baseball, using Jolly's mop for a bat. Luckily, Queen Frostine had her spell ready. To catch everyone's attention, she had Gloppy blow on his horn. Return to how you were, strange man, when first you came to Candyland. Suddenly, all the fluffy puffers disappeared, except one. And everyone cheered. King Candy waved the key to his castle. Now come on to my castle and we'll have a party. Jolly brought a drum and Gloppy brought his horn so they could have music. There was cake for everyone. And to top it off, ice cream cones were served. They even invited you-know-who. But no one said the name Fluffy Puffer out loud. Oh, no. <laughs> we have finished all our Candyland games for today. You can play them again whenever you want to. Or you can play the Shoots and Ladders VCR game with our friends Bobby and Reggie. The Shoots and Ladders kids have some great adventures with numbers and sounds. We have a lot of fun playing our VCR games. And don't forget, we're all from Milton Bradley. See you soon. Bye.